Welcome back to the junk room, everybody. It's me, the junk man, coming back at you with another video. This one I thought we'd do a little bit different video. We usually talk toys. This one we're gonna talk weird He-Man books. Yeah, you heard me right. Weird He-Man books. Now I remember getting some of these golden books uh, when I was little. They wasn't like the golden books I remember when I was real little. Remember those little ones? These were little bigger books here, and they always had interesting titles. And then when you opened them up, they wasn't really what you uh, thought about here. Uh, in fact, uh, here's one of them right here. He-Man smells trouble. This one has Skinko, Skunko. I call him Skunko in a video one time. Y'all let me know his name. Stinko or something. I can't remember. Sorry, it's been about 30 years ago. But there's one right there. He's man, he man smells trouble. Woo! I bet he does. I bet he smells like the inside of my grandma's purse. Whew. I could tell you stories about that all day. But I figure we'll pull out some. Now, this one I don't really remember, but I, was, I thought I'd do look at 10 of them that I did have. Most of the time they caught my eye because of the strange title. And I thought we'd just pull them up and talk about them. So, um, I don't know if you remember these books. Hopefully you did. Let's go. Well, let's start with this one right here. Put it up here so you can see it right here. I remember this is probably the first He-Man book I remember getting. And it's entitled, uh, He-Man Dances for Grace Skull. This is where He-Man has to raise money for, uh, it, um, a new drawbridge for Castle Grayskull. It seems they uh, wanted to redo the castle or something and they ran out of money and they didn't have um, enough money for the uh, drawbridge and He-Man decides to have a dance contest and uh, if he can dance for 24 hours non-stop the uh, like the king's, some, somebody related to king, I don't remember, somebody related to king it's been a long time since I read this uh, one of the king's uh, workers has says he's going to build a whole new uh, door for Castle Grayskull if He-Man can dance for 24 hours. <sighs> no spoilers alert here, but let's just say everything works out. Let's see this other book here. Here's another one. Another one. A lot of these were focused on He-Man. This is He-Man and his hard candy. This is when he befriends a young lady in the woods of Eternia who's lost her family in a forest fire and He-Man's there to give her some help and share his hard candy with her. It's a very touching book if I remember correctly but that's a tragic ending. The uh, little girl uh, she's playing with He-Man's sword at the end of the book. She's running around the forest jumping around and she slips on a rock and do I have to say it? sword goes right into her neck it's a little dark a little dark one for the uh, children's book i was surprised but this is i think these, these little bigger golden books the they were trying to hit a more mature kid audience you know not the six-year-olds i think they were looking for a more mature 12 or 13 year old uh another one i remember reading this one here was the smoky fog love affair yep this is where he-man falls in love with a smoky fog it was like remember the movie fog it was this big old fog blob, and it would go around this town and everything, and everybody hated it. Oh my God, I can't believe Eternia is so foggy. Whenever he came into Eternia or some little area, Snake Mountain or something, they would get all mad. But, oh, they hate the fog. Well, He-Man went to stop the fog one day, and he realized he and the fog had a lot in common, and they actually started courting and fell in love. Now, the relationship didn't last. I think the weather changed and the fog disappeared. And He-Man always held a special place in his heart for the fog. Um, here's one I really, this is probably one of my favorite. The Double Underwear Feud. This is when He-Man learns that. I think his name's Cyclops, the guy with a bunch of eyes, you know, who turned the head. Remember that action figure? He-Man learns some shocking news. They both have the same furry underwear. Now, I know women get mad when they show up at a party and two girls are wearing the same dress, but can you imagine being a He-Man showing up to fight evil and the other guy you're going to fight is wearing the same furry underwear as you? Sure, toy companies love it because you can make the toys a lot cheaper, but He-Man didn't love it, and neither did Cyclops. So they fought over who had the right to wear the furry underwear. Again, I'm not going to spoil any of this for you, so I'm not going to tell you who won that fight. Let's just say somebody walked away with two pair of fuzzy underwear. I would wear them inside outwards. If I had that fuzzy underwear, I think I would wear them inside outwards. And then we've got He-Man, Masters of the Universe, Fisto's Swollen Itchy Hemorrhoid. This was more when they were trying to get into that, try to teach kids something here. Fisto picks up this big rock. He-Man says, let me get it. It's too heavy. And Fisto's like, hey, I got a fist. I can get this. Let me do it. And he doesn't lift with his the right way. And he pulls up that big boulder. And 
a hemorrhoid pops out. The rest of the book is swells up and gets really itchy. He has to get Orko to scratch it with a stick. It's a it's a tough one, especially when he forgets that he has the metal fist and he reaches back to scratch his own hemorrhoid and pops it. But it tries to teach the kids early about hemorrhoids and you don't squeeze them with a metal fist. <laughs> I tell you, I know some kids that grew up and wish they learned that early. Let's see what else one you got. Oh, Beast Man was some of you guys' favorite. Beast Man. Beast Man shares his Mega Beast. I didn't read this one. I, I remember seeing this one at the store. I always wanted it. I wanted to find out what Beast Man's Mega Beast was. Here he is showing He Man his Mega Mega Beast. I don't know what it is, but I bet it's red and hairy. Let's see what else we got. Oh. And that's just probably one of the first ones I remember reading. I remember I didn't buy this one. Walden Books had a little kid section in the back. I would sit back there and read the books back there. And this one, I think, it doesn't say it on the cover. If I remember right, this one was a pop-up book. Well, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It's called He-Man Gets a Wedgie on the Way to the Forum. I remember even reading this as a kid and being kind of let down because it's kind of clickbait. You're almost to the very end of the story before He-Man even gets a wedgie. I mean, he's one page away from the forum when Skeletor shows up and gives him a wedgie. They had some adventures on the way and everything, but I think the title was a little misleading here. Uh, he doesn't have a wedgie all the way to the forum, just one page right before he gets there. And I uh, still couldn't even figure out what a forum was. Let's see, what else we got? Oh, this is one where He-Man and Skeletor became friends. Enemies break for an icy treat. There is a new ice cream shop that's opened up in Eternia. And who is the first guest there? The owners want He-Man and Skeletor to share a lollipop soda. That's right, a lollipop. If I remember right, it's a lollipop lemonade soda. If I correct, let me know if I'm not. I think that's what it was. And they sit in the diner and all the pastors in Eternia walk by and they say, Look, He-Man and Skeletor can take a break from fighting. Enjoy this uh, ice cream, this sundae, this milkshake. Then, hey. Maybe we can all put our differences aside, at least for the grand opening of the ice cream shop, and have some ice cream. Man, really warmed your heart. This was the tearjerker of the series. Just, 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 just talking about this one. Just, it's, I'm getting kind of wordy. Well, my eyes are kind of getting, getting wet. I, I have to go. I have to go look on eBay to see if I find this one because. It really pulls at your heartstrings, man. They should make that one into a movie. But Then there was a Christmas book. Uh, this one right here, Licky Sticky. It sure is icky. This is when they, uh, I think they kind of ripped off a Christmas story. He-Man puts his tongue on this pole outside of Castle Grayskull. He -Man, uh, Skeletor comes to take over Castle Grayskull and finds He-Man stuck on it. And he's like, ha finally, I can take Castle Grayskull. But he just ends up laughing at He-Man so much that by the time he gets to the castle... The tongues done came off the pole, and He-Man saves the day. And you learn your lesson. Don't stick around to laugh at a man with a tongue stuck on a pole, or you might miss your opportunity. This is kind of like the hare and the rabbit story. It was a really, really good one. And believe it or not, we're only down to one more. But trust me, it's a good one. And I heard this one's getting reprinted. This one was ahead of its time, they said. It didn't sell really well. It was released in 1984, and it didn't sell good at all. But now they're saying it was ahead of their time, and they're going to re-release it in a special edition. I heard it's got three more pages added to it. So that will be really good here. Uh, dead Naming, Orko Transitions. This is where Orko decides he wants to be a female. He's got long blonde hair now. And uh, the attorney or don't know how to take it to start with. They're like, they still call him by his original name, but I think he's going by Orko Et, if I remember correctly. Again, a long time since I read this one. And the whole planet really has to come to terms with this. And by the end of the book, again, spoiler alert, he turns back into Orko. He decides that maybe he wasn't ready, but he didn't rule it all out. He said, hey, I might want to transition into a female again or something else. He talked about transforming into a cat, but he never did, at least not before I remember this. They did a sequel to this book. I don't think they did, but anyway, that's a look at 10 of the coolest He-Man golden books from when I was a kid. Did you read any of these? Did you sit in the back of a B. Dalton's or Walton bookstores at the mall and read these? I bet you did. I bet you did. Um, and let me know what you think. Uh, any of these stick out or is there one I forgot about that maybe you need to tell me about? Well, let me know that and more in the comments below. And we'll talk again soon. And they're going to re-release it in a special edition. I heard it's got three more pages added to it. 
So that'll be really good here. Uh, dead naming. Orcos transition. Dead naming. Dead naming. Orcos transition. Transition. I probably said that fucked up. I know. Sorry. This is where Orac decides he wants to be a lady Orac. No. Dead naming. Orcos transition. Transition. Trans trans Transition. Transition. Dead naming. Orcos. Transition. Dead naming. Orco. Transition. Transit. Trans. Transition. Transition. Dead naming. Orcos. Transition. God damn. Why can I say that? Transition. Trans. Transition. Fuck. Maybe if I. I say it right in my head. I can't get it right. It's come out right. Okay, let's see. Transitions. Transitions. Dead naming. Orco transitions. Hey, jump <laughs> man channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>